Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, module three of Hypnotic Passive Profits. Um, there's obviously one or two announcements to Rob to make, so um, this is very much now we're getting on to the stuff that is Rob's area of expertise, not mine, i.e. the technical stuff, the stuff that tends to scare people off, and I'll be totally honest, did scare me off um, until kind of towards the middle of last year when Rob started going through it with me and demystified it and showed me that in actual fact I'd been sort of scared of the, uh, what's the word, like the invisible monster. Uh, I was scared of things that really didn't need to be an issue. Um, I'd clearly fallen for the all the bunk and the website designers have fed to me about how difficult it was to get your own website together and, and, and stuff. And I've discovered over the past approaching a year now that that's the trap that a lot of people fall into and obviously web designers want you to believe that it's difficult because that's where they're making the money from but there are uh, simple ways certainly from the point of view of selling products in the way we've been talking about to get stuff up online and making you money and with that in mind that's where we're heading towards with things so please welcome to the call Mr Robert Temple. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for that fabulous introduction once again. Welcome everybody else to uh, module three. Um, as you can, uh, as you will hopefully know, this um, today's module is called Building Your Profit Machine. And as Jonathan mentioned there, this is really where we get into the, where we're starting to get into the kind of technical nitty gritty side of actually uh, building your uh, online business, building the sales process for your first online campaign. So um, as per usual, if you have any questions as we go through this webinar, please do go ahead and type them into the questions box and I will do my very best to answer those questions um, as comprehensively as I can. Now, um, this module and the next module were originally going to be all one thing. And then I realized that would be just too much to take in. Uh, there'd be too much content. So we've split it into two modules. Um, basically, this module, we're going to be talking about building the sales website that you're going to be using in order to sell your product and also deliver your product. And uh, in the next uh, module, we're going to talk about uh, actually filling that, that website with content. So today, we're just going to talk about creating the framework. And then next week, we're going to talk about adding that co uh, the content, the sales copy and all of the download stuff and everything else. So um, I just want to very briefly uh, at the start of each module, as usual, just recap what we've kind of done so far and also look at where we're going to be heading and where our focus is going to shift um, for this module. Um, right. So uh, what have we got so far? Well, the first thing we've done is we have chosen a niche for our first product. Hopefully you've all got that from back from module one. You should have a name for your first product as well. And um, so Jonathan and I, as, uh, as you know, are building a campaign right here alongside you. Ours is a stop smoking product. Uh, so that is the niche we have selected is a stop smoking product. And we've decided to call it the simple quitting system. And again, we talked about all the reasons for that and that the, the kind of the creative side of branding back in um, module two, sorry, module one. Um, we've also got a domain name for our first product, uh, which is simplequittingsystem.com. We bought that. And we also have some web hosting for our business too. Hopefully you guys have got that. Some of you have contacted us and set up your, well, we've initiated the process of setting up your web hosting for you. And hopefully you've also put some uh, wheels in motion with regards to making your actual product itself. Jonathan and I have been working very hard over the last week in amongst everything else and we have created the ultimate um, simple quitting system product that we're eventually going to be selling at the end of this process. So in the last module we talked to you all the way through the process of product creation, talked about the different types of product you might want to make, how to make them, how to plan them, how to create them, how to publish them, etc. So just to tell you what we've ended up with, um, which is which was as planned, um, our, our stop smoking product we've put together consists of four main parts. Part one is a hypnosis MP3, um, which is the uh, a 38 minute hypnosis track to help people quit smoking, uh, which I have recorded. The second part of that is an ebook, which we have put together. Uh, it's about 60 something pages, and basically it talks people through these, uh, the effects of quitting smoking, the effects of actually smoking, uh, and various other things too. So it's just a kind of an extra little piece of content that will help them to quit. 
The third part is a bunch of worksheets that we're giving them uh, that will help them quit smoking to plan out their, uh, their schedule of listening to the MP3 and things like that. And finally, uh, we're giving them five videos that I've recorded where we will teach them different techniques to help them overcome cravings and, and you know really beat the urge to uh, pick up another cigarette. So that is our finished product. As I said, it comes in four parts, um, which is the MP3, a PDF ebook, some PDF worksheets, and five videos. So those are the four main sections or parts to the product. Now, obviously, there's no reason why you can't just have an MP3 or just have an ebook. But as I mentioned in the previous module, we've combined all of these different things together in order to um, kind of create more more supposed value and make the product a little bit more usable for our uh, customers. So hopefully you have got all of that so far, a niche, a name, a domain name, some web hosting. And if you haven't got a finished product yet, hopefully you are somewhere on the way towards having one. Maybe you've planned out the product, maybe you've recorded it, but haven't edited it yet or something along those lines. And if you haven't got the product, obviously, uh, you know, you've still got time to get it. But obviously we do want to be moving on very quickly. Now, speaking of moving on, um, it's time to talk about this module. And in this module, we're going to be talking uh, about creating our simple sales machine, otherwise known as a sales funnel. Now, a sales machine or a sales funnel is basically a very simple four to six page website, which is going to achieve a number of important objectives. It needs to uh, take your customers, uh, so your potential customers, your prospects, your leads, your target, you're going to try and take those people and convert them into a sale make them actually give you their credit card information or their PayPal details to pay for the product. And it also has to automatically deliver that product so that this whole system can be put on complete autopilot so it can happen while you're asleep. So it needs to do all of that. And it also needs to make it very easy for your affiliates uh, and your promotional partners to promote your website, promote your product and make a commission from that. So those are the kind of the basic functions and objectives that it needs to achieve. Now, the cool thing is that we're actually giving you a very easy to use kind of fill in the blanks template. Now, if you decide to go down that route, that's fine. You can also have one professionally designed and we're gonna talk about the two different options there uh, later on. Um, but we are gonna be giving you a fill in the blanks template, which if you want to use, you can literally just download it. You literally just go through, insert your details, insert your product information, insert your name, insert your email address, insert your copyright info. It's a, it, you know literally just filling in the blanks and then upload that to the internet if you want to go down that route. So the first thing I wanna really stress, um, and it, it really touches on something Jonathan said in the introduction there, um, is that this, this sort of sales funnel, this sales machine, this website is not a kind of typical website. You see, if you were putting together a website offering your services as a hypnotherapist or a stage hypnotist or even a painter and decorator or a gardener or anything, you'd probably be inclined to hire a designer and then make the website as graphical, attractive and beautiful as possible. You want to make something that looks so that people land on it and go, oh my God, how, how beautiful does that website look? And fortunately, uh, this is kind of, or unfortunately, I suppose, this is what web designers will try and sell you on. They'll try and sell you on, on how amazing their websites will look, um, how, how you know, aesthetically pleasing they will be, how delighted with it Vincent van Gogh would have been. They want to make, you know, they want to really sell you on the benefits of it being graphically pleasing. Um, the truth is that for a lot of purposes, particularly the purpose of this system, that's absolutely not what you need. The problem is that graphical, uh, graphic designers and web designers are typically, uh, they have that mindset of just making everything look nice. They don't have the mindset of selling stuff. So with that said, uh, which is why, in fact, if you go and look, if you Google web design, you'll find that a lot of web designers have beautiful websites in their portfolio, but theirs is hideous and doesn't look very good and doesn't, and you would, you'd think, oh God, that person can't ever be a web designer until you look at their portfolio. And the reason is because it's not about aesthetics. Aesthetics don't sell, they, they just kind of decorate it. Uh, it's the important content that you need to draw people's attention to. So with that said, um, what we're gonna be looking to do here um, is not create a typical website. You don't want something that looks beautiful and stunning and all the rest of it. Um, and the other thing is that most typical websites would normally have a navigation bar of some sort, some kind of menu where you can look at all the different pages and it would have um, 
all of the different links and pages on that and you can navigate through from page to page so you can look at the about us page you can look at the uh, you know why hire us page you can look at the contact page you can look at testimonials on another page and what a video tour on another page and all the rest of it so you can navigate around from page to page but that is absolutely not the case with the sales funnel that we're building instead what we're going to create is a number of static and independent pages which are not linked together to be navigable so it's not designed so that people can look through all of the different pages to find out more information or any of that just a number of static independent pages and aesthetics are really not important in fact i have often found not always but i've often found that the plainest sales pages and plainest opt-in pages convert better than the ones that have all fancy graphics and flowers and stars and, uh, and whistles and things so uh, it's kind of up to you um, in terms of which route you go whether you want to have something that's vaguely graphical and nice or very very plain but the point with this is you're not going to a web designer and paying hundreds or thousands of dollars to have a really nice sexy looking website design where they can navigate through all the pages and everything that's not what we're going for here we're going for something plain simple uh, which will initially appear to your customer or your prospects as just to be a simple one page website the truth is there are a few pages that we're going to need there are kind of five uh, basic pages that you're going to need to create there are a few others that are kind of optional but i'm going to go through the five main pages and then we're going to look at the optional ones uh, in a later module when we're kind of really polishing off the final website so uh, with regard to the five pages we're going to need they are as follows we will need a sales page you'll need a registration page you'll need a download page you'll need an affiliate sign up page and an affiliate tools page now i'm going to break down each of those one by one right now again you need a sales page a registration page, a download page, an affiliate sign up page, and an affiliate tools page. Now, the sales page, and as I said, we're going to go through all of those one by one right now. So, we're going to start with the first one, which is the most important one, and that is the sales page. Now, this is the, typically the first page that your prospects will see when they land on your website. So, they're browsing the internet, maybe they open their emails and find an email from you or one of your affiliates. They look down, they click on the link in the email, and it will take them to your sales page. Now, it's typically um, going to consist of a long scrolling sales letter. Sometimes they go on for eternity and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, the first thing I always do when I see a sales page is look at the scroll bar on the right hand side. And if it goes really, really tiny, that means I'm going to be reading this page for the next four hours. But uh, typically, it's going to consist of a long scrolling sales letter, which is designed to grab your visitor's attention. Well, I'll, I'll go through each of the bits it's going to do. It's going to grab their attention. So the first thing is they're going to land on that website and your website needs to reach out, grab hold of them and just get their attention. It's going to want to make them want to read on. And we're going to do that with a big headline at the top of the uh, sales page. The next thing you need to do is then to aggravate their problem. So they know that they have this issue. They know they have this problem to solve or this desire to solve something in their life. That's why they've landed on the sales page in the first place. And you're going to aggravate that problem. You're going to really exaggerate and really uh, enlarge the feelings associated with that problem. And as hypnotists, you're kind of in the prime position to do this. You know how to use words and suggestion to really motivate people's pain points and really motivate them to want to solve that problem, really, really anger them and build up that pain and, and, and trouble. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna aggravate that problem. So if they are a smoker, then you would aggravate that problem by talking about all the disadvantages of smoking, such as uh, you know, being out of breath all of the time, having bad breath, having stained teeth, having stained nails, uh, finding that you are coughing a lot, finding that you and all these different your skin gets worse all these problems associated with smoking you've never got any money uh, and all of the other things same with weight loss if you're overweight you are going to be out of breath a lot you are going to be and all the different problems that go with that particular thing so again you're going to aggravate the problem reel them in and make them think yes that's exactly how i feel uh, and i wish i could solve that problem just as they're at the point where they're thinking i really really need to solve this problem that's when you tell them about your solution you tell them what you have to offer them you tell them about your product a brand new simple quitting system that will help you quit smoking in as little as 38 minutes so you tell them exactly what you have to offer them and why it is the perfect solution to their problems 
So when you have uh, done that, you can then sell them on the benefits of your product. You can back that up with some proof, some testimonials, some evidence as to why this is a great product. You're gonna sell them on all of the benefits of your product. Now, this is turning into a mini masterclass on copywriting, and I don't want it to do that because we're gonna focus on that in the next module, but I'm just gonna briefly touch on each of these points. Um, one of the things I mentioned there is sell them on the benefits. There's a big thing here about lots of sales pages I see don't sell people on the benefits of their product, they sell them on the features of using their product. Um, there's a bit of a, there's a big difference between a feature and a benefit. So to put it this way, um, a feature of the product could be that it is, um, a feature of the product would be that it is a hypnosis MP3. So it's a, a, a hypnosis MP, a downloadable hypnosis MP3. So the fact that it's downloadable is a feature but it's not strictly a benefit. The benefit would be that they don't have to wait for you to mail it to them in the post. So they don't have to go and buy a book or buy a, a CD and wait for it to be sent to them. If they buy your product, they can instantly download it. So the feature is that it's downloadable. The benefit is that that means they don't have to wait for it. They can start using this package within the next few minutes. But the same thing applies to anything. If you, again, you could, the bet the feature could be that it's a hypnosis mp3 the benefits of hypno uh, the benefit of that is well you just describe all the benefits of hypnosis all of the things that it can achieve that no other therapy on the planet can or no um no uh, nicotine patches or gum can achieve that kind of thing um so you tell them on the, the 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 features and preferably the benefits and then finally you would close the sale so you give them something to do you tell them exactly what they need to do in order to go ahead and grab that product now, uh, the sales page is going to be primarily made up of text. Uh, it's a good idea to put some images through to break all of that text up as well. Um, it's going to have a large attention grabbing headline right at the very, very top of the page. And it's also going to have some subheadings as they scroll down the page. So it'll break all of the letter down to point out their problem, to aggravate that problem, to tell them about your solution, to sell them on the benefits of your solution, give them proof and credentials, tell them why you are the expert they should listen to. And then finally at the end, uh, you can then go ahead and close that sale, uh, reel them in, tell them exactly what they need to do. So what that means is that at the bottom of the page, you would have a, a, a button of some sort to be your call to action because it's important that you actually tell people exactly what you want them to do, when you want them to do it, and how you want them to do it. So you would have a call to action at the bottom of the page. This would tell people how to purchase your product. Um, usually this would come in the form of a button that would say either buy now or add to cart. I've done some extensive split testing on, on the text that you should have on the buy it now button. Uh, so we've tried all sorts. We've tried order now, buy now, add to cart, check out, all these different types of words that go on uh, order buttons and the best one we've ever used by a long way is add to cart for some reason if you just have the words add to cart even that's not strictly what they're doing add to cart is typically used on big shopping cart websites where you might be shopping add, adding things to your cart all the time but then continuing to shop and then checking it out all at once in our case we're just selling them one thing but for some reason people seem familiar and uh, like the term add to cart so uh, i recommend using that but again we're going to talk about all of that stuff in the next module so that's how your sales page is going to look it's a long scrolling uh, page a long scrolling letter uh, which will have a headline, it will have all the different features I've just mentioned, and then at the end there will be a call to action. So the idea is that people will land on this page when they land on your website, and a certain percentage of them will think, you know, this is the product for me, I need this product. They'll scroll down to the bottom, they will click on the Add to Cart button, and when they do, that will take them to an order form. Now, the order form isn't actually going to be part of our website. The order form is going to be hosted somewhere else because we don't want to give you the hassles of processing credit cards, um, having to have secure certificates on your website, which costs an extra $50 a year or £50 a year. So you don't want any of those hassles. So we're going to use third-party services that have done all of that for you, such as PayPal and ClickBank.com, because they have everything set up in place to be able to accept credit cards for you, accept PayPal for you. I, for a, uh, about six months, had my own merchant account and we were processing credit cards and it is more of a headache than you would ever imagine. So don't do that anymore. Um, we're just using third-party services such as PayPal and ClickBank and that's what you're going to do. So when someone clicks on the Add to Cart button, they will actually be taken to your order form, which is hosted off your website. It's hosted somewhere else on the internet. 
and that will allow them to put in their credit card details or pay via PayPal. Now, a percentage of those people will then go ahead and buy your product. They will then actually go and put their details in and buy the product. Um, obviously, uh, some of them will actually leave at that point. There are some people who we've tracked everything, all of the metrics, all the numbers on this. There are some people that will land on the sales page. They'll click on the add to cart button, but then something about the order form will turn them off. They'll have last minute purchasing blues and then run away. So a percentage of people will click on the add to cart button and go to the order form. A percentage of those people will then put in their credit card details, put in their PayPal details, click a button and process the payments. The money will leave their PayPal account or leave their debit card or leave their credit card. And then as soon as it does and uh, the order form processes the order, they will then be taken to the next page you're going to create, which is what I call the registration page. Now the registration page is actually um, optional in that you don't need one, um, but it is a really good idea. So I'm going to talk you through what it's for right now. Um, the original way of having this funnel would be that when somebody orders the product, as soon as their payment has been processed, they would immediately be taken to the download page where they can download the product. Um, what we've actually realized is a better idea is as soon as they've purchased the product, they are then taken to what I call the registration page. So basically, this is a very simple page. Uh, which says at the top, complete your registration. And then it says, uh, you know, thank you very much for purchasing Simple Quitting System. I know this is really going to help you uh, to quit smoking. You're really going to love this. Now, before I go ahead and give you this, uh, before you go ahead and download this program, I need you to complete your registration or register your purchase. So basically what you would do is there would then be a box underneath which says enter your name and enter your email address and then click the uh, complete their registration button. And what happens is they put in their name because obviously they've paid for the product, they now want to download it. So they need to register an account with you. So that, that's how it appears to them. That's not quite what's happening, but that is how it appears to them. The truth is they are registering their purchase. That's the best way to word it. So when they put in their name and they put in their email address and click the button, that will then uh, add them to your email list. So we're gonna set you up with an email list, just like the one that we use to contact all of our subscribers and customers now, using a service called aweber.com. And basically what happens is, as soon as they join your list, as soon as they have completed their purchase and completed their registration, they will now be on your list and they will be taken immediately to the download page. So just to recap, they land on the sales page, they click through to the order form, they enter their details and complete the purchase. Upon doing that, they are taken to the registration page. They put in their name and their email address and click the button. That adds them to your email list, which means you can email market to them. Anytime you want, you can send an email. It will go out to your list of customers and you can then promote other products. So for example, if you're selling a stop smoking product like we are, then after they have purchased the product and after they have joined your list, um, by completing their registration. Say two weeks later, if you were then to release a weight loss product, you could email everyone on your Stop Smoking customer list and say, hey, I noticed you quit smoking a couple of weeks ago. I really wanted to congratulate you on that. Just so that you, uh, just to reassure you, I know a lot of people actually gain weight when they quit smoking. It's just a downside of quitting smoking. But don't worry, I've got your back covered. If you enjoy my quit smoking product, why don't you check out this weight loss product and send them across to the weight loss product. Um, but fundamentally, you could then go ahead and promote any other form of, of kind of lifestyle changing product, any kind of self-development hypnosis product would do because there will be a percentage of the people who bought your first product who will need your help with phobias, confidence, stress, depression, enthusiasm, energy, or any of those other cool things. Now, obviously, um, in some respects, uh, there will also be a group of people who just really like you and like your products who will not necessarily have those issues, but they will feel that they want to buy your product because they've bought into you and they've bought into the, the service and the things that you offer. There's a lot of times I've had my previous customers come back and buy more stuff from me, even though they didn't feel that they really needed the product. They wanted to check it out. They wanted to experience it because they like what I had sold them the first time. They'd become my kind of fans and my ultimate customers, really. So that's the next step is that they will then register their purchase, which means they will now be on your email list, which you can log in and you can email your list anytime you like in the future to tell them about your other products or also other people's products that you can promote for a commission. 
Now, after they have entered their name and entered their email address, they will then be taken to the download page. Now, this is the kind of the uh, fourth, sorry, the third page. We've had the sales page, the registration page, and the download page. Um, and it's often referred to as the thank you page. Kind of a logical answer, a logical name, because uh, typically when you see these pages, they will say thank you for your purchase at the top. This is basically the page that gives them the product. So once again, it's a very simple page. I just want you to imagine a simple website, a simple web page with a long scrolling section in the middle, although this one will not be as long as scrolling as the sales page. And basically at the top, it says, thank you very much for purchasing XYZ product. I know you're really going to like it. You could download it below, uh, enjoy, and then your name. And then below that would be a section where they can download their products. Now, obviously, if like the product we're creating, you have a product that consists of multiple parts, you would then give them a link to each part of that product. So we would say, step one, download the Stop Smoking Hypnosis MP3. Step two, and then a link. Step two, download the Stop Smoking book, and then a link. Uh, step three, download the Quit Smoking Worksheets, then a link, and then finally download the Stop Smoking Training videos, and then some videos. And literally what they would do is they would go down the page, they'd go through step one, step two, step three, and step four, they'd click on each link to download the product to their computer. Now the way that works is that when you upload your website to your web space, in other words, you've got your web space out there on the internet, you take your web pages, so you'd have your sales page, your registration page, your download page, you take all of those and you would upload them to your web space. And once they're on your web space, you would also upload your product to the web space as well. And you're gonna put it in a secret part, somewhere that only you can get to, only you know about, so that nobody can find your product by chance. And then what you can do then is you can link the download page to each aspect of that product. I really hope that makes sense. So you would upload your product to the internet, you would upload your web pages to the internet, and then you would set it up so that when they click the download link, uh, or each of the download links on your download page, that would simply call and refer to and pull the product and then give it to them. So nobody can randomly find this, but if people have bought it, then they will be able to download it because you will be giving them the link to download each part of the product. So just to recap on what we've, what we've covered so far there, we've got the, uh, the sales page, which sells your product. We've got the registration page, where after purchase, they can then go ahead and enter their name and email address, join your list and complete their registration. Part three is the download page. This is where they can then download their products. So the next page is what I call the affiliate sign up page. Now again, like the uh, registration page, this page is optional, but I do recommend that you have one. You see, affiliates are basically people who, other marketers who will promote your products in other words, drive traffic to your websites and generate sales and income for you in exchange for a commission. So it's really just like having a kind of uh, a permanent sales team who will promote your products, promote your products, promote your products, but you only need to pay them when they make a sale. They are working on a commission only basis uh, and they will work very, very hard to promote your products because they know that it will be worthwhile for the fairly easy commissions they can make. So there's a, really an advantage to both of you of this arrangement. Um, they like it because they don't have to go through all the difficult work of making a product, putting it up for sale and making sure it converts. But it's also great for you because you don't have to go through all of the difficulty of actually making, of actually driving the traffic and doing all the rest of it. And then you split the, the, the money 50-50. So it's a great arrangement for both of you. And affiliates will work very, very hard to promote your product once they know that it's up, once they know that it works, once they know that it actually does convert. So that's really cool. Now, I recommend that you use affiliates to drive the majority of traffic to your website. Um, I would say literally in my business right now, about 95% of my traffic comes from affiliates. Now, that's not a brilliant business model because it does mean that if for whatever reason tomorrow everybody stopped promoting me, I would have no sales and no money coming in. But at the same time, um, it's a really solid, sturdy way to drive traffic en masse on a regular basis. And also that, that traffic is hugely targeted. It actually comes as a recommendation. So when one of your affiliates mails their email list about your product, um, it's not kind of a cold promotion, if you like. They're not landing on your website totally cold because 
they will see that email as really a recommendation or an endorsement of you, your work and your product. So um, it's actually some really warm, hot traffic as well. So definitely a great traffic method. So we're going to be using affiliates, although I'm going to teach you 50 other different ways of driving traffic. We are going to be using affiliates to drive the majority of the traffic to our website. So what we really need to do is to create a way that affiliates can sign up in order to promote our products. So what I recommend you do is to create an affiliate sign up page or an affiliate registration page, which will then give affiliates full details of the product. It will tell them how much they can earn and tell them why they should promote it for you as well. It's really, I guess, a kind of simple sales page, uh, which rather than selling the general public on your product, it will sell affiliates on the benefits of promoting your products. So the idea would be that they would literally, um, they'd read this page, you would tell them um, what your product is, why it's the best product you you've got out? Why why it's the best product out there? Why it converts so well? You tell them what their EPC is going to be, and their EPC stands for earning per click. Basically, this is the number one metric that affiliates care about. They don't really care how well your product converts. They don't really compare uh, care how much it is. What they care about is their earning per click, and that basically means for each unique visitor that they send you. So for each unique web visitor or click, in other words, each person that clicks on their affiliate link, how much money are they going to make? So to put that into some sort of context, if your product is $100 and it converts at 1%, that means that one person out of every 100 will buy it, that means that their EPC is roughly going to be $1. Okay, So for every 100 people they send to your website, they should make $100. So they are making $1 for each person they've sent. Um, if your product was um, $50, but it converted at 3%, that would mean that they were going to make, uh, well, they're gonna make three sales for every 100 people, which means they're making $150 for every 100 people they send. And then by dividing one by the other, you can work out what their EPC would be. That's really all affiliates care about. They wanna know if they send 100 visitors to your website, how much money they're going to make if they send a thousand visitors to your website how much money are they going to make if they send ten thousand visitors how much money are they going to make and it is fairly scientific it will vaguely vary from from affiliate to affiliate because it will partially depend on the relationship they've got with your list so with some of my products i've got affiliates who can get uh, an epc of like three dollars fifty and then I've also got affiliates that only get an EPC of $1 because it comes down to the fact that they, they don't have such a great relationship with their list. So people want to know typically what is the average EPC that your affiliates are getting for you. Uh, and we'll be talking about how to find that information out uh, when we get the, the actual sales funnel finished and up and running in a couple of weeks. So basically, it will tell them again what your product is, why it's so great, how much it is, how well it converts, what the EPC is. Um, and what the benefits of promoting it to their list and to the well and to the general public as well because there will be affiliates that will actually go out and use all kinds of other different traffic methods not just sending emails to their list you will find that affiliates will be out paying for Facebook advertising I have seen my products being advertised on Facebook adverts even though I'm not using Facebook adverts in other words the adverts you see on click on Facebook where it costs the marketer every time someone clicks on that advert I do not use that right now. I have done and I will be, but I, I'm not at the moment. But I've seen my products on there and that's because my affiliates are actually paying for Facebook advertising to promote my products through their affiliate links. So you will find there are people who will do that and the same thing applies to Google pay-per-click advertising. You will find that there will be people who will go out and make blogs about you. You'll find there will be people who will do all of those kind of things. Um... The other thing that this page would include is a very simple sign up form um, which would ask for the affiliate's name and email address so that you can then email them with important affiliate news and updates. So basically that means that they would join your list but it's not a list that you would ever market to, it's just a list that you would use to collect affiliates. So whenever you release a new product, whenever you have a new, uh, you know, maybe you do a special offer for a week, whenever you do anything that your affiliates need to know about, you can then email your affiliates en masse and get them to promote other things for you. 
Um, I'm going to answer Jared's question in just a second. So I, I have seen it, but I'm going to come back and answer it in a second. Um, and the the final page that you're going to need to set up is your affiliate tools page. So basically, once your affiliates have registered to promote your product, you will then send them to a page which will contain their affiliate tools. Now, affiliate tools are the promotional templates and ideas that they can use to effectively promote your products. So basically, when somebody signs up as an affiliate, they will get a unique affiliate link that they can use to promote your products. And when they mail uh, or do anything to promote your products, uh, they will use that affiliate link, which will track the fact that they sent the, 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 that they sent the visitor. Uh, it will track how much they are owed in commission um, and make sure that everything works just fine. So basically, you will need to give your new affiliates their unique affiliate link, and you would do this on the affiliate tools page. So as soon as someone has registered, as soon as a marketer has registered to promote your product, you would send them to the affiliate tools page, which would give them their affiliate link. All they'd have to do is to insert their affiliate username into the affiliate link, and then that would be their proper URL to send. But alongside that URL, you are going to have to do a little bit of work. You see, affiliates are usually very, very lazy, and they will usually want you to do the majority of the work for them when it comes to promoting the product. In terms of, they want you to give them what it is that they need to promote the product. For example, if your affiliate has a list of 100,000 people, and they are going to mail their list of 100,000 people, so they're going to send an email to their list, and send a load of traffic to your website, they will usually require that you write the email for them. But you don't have to go around and write the email for every individual affiliate. You just write it once, put it up on this web page, and then all of your affiliates can copy, paste, and send it. Literally, the easier you make the affiliate's job, the more likely they are to actively promote your websites. But without those affiliates, you're going to make a lot fewer sales. So what you'll need to do is you'll want to you'll want to write several emails they can send their list. You'll want to write several blog posts they can put on their blog if they've got one. You'll want to write several product reviews so that they can go around all of the different social bookmarking websites, uh, places like Dig and Squidoo and all these websites which are getting millions and millions of hits every single year. Um, they're going to go around and post their product reviews everywhere. You want to give them banner adverts, like little graphical images that they can use to put on their websites to link to yours. You want to give them uh, updates they can put on Facebook and Twitter. So tweets that they can tweet, Facebook statuses they can put on Facebook, pay-per-click advertising ideas they can use with Google and Facebook. Basically anything that your affiliates can use to promote your product easily. All right, That's what you want to give them. So the, the, this would just be a long page that would have all of the emails you've written, all of the blog posts you've pre-written, all the product reviews, banner adverts, Facebook, Twitter updates, pay-per-click ad ideas. So that literally all the affiliate has to do is to take their copy and paste their affiliate link and copy and paste one of those emails, put the two together, send it out to their list or put it on their blog or put it on one of those other websites uh, and you've done the majority of the work for them but they're going to do the difficult bit. So they, for example, already have the email list that you don't have. They already have the um, the ability to profit profitably sell things on pay-per-click networks and stuff. The things that would cost you a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort, they will do but they will, they will expect, in fact, that you give them the basic promotional tools to use. So this is the page where all of those things will be stored. So those are the kind of the five main pages. You're gonna have the sales page that will sell your product. You're gonna have the registration page where people can join your list and complete their purchase once they've actually made their payment. You're gonna have the download page where they can then download your product. You're gonna have your affiliate sign up page where affiliates can sign up to promote your stuff. And you're going to have the affiliate tools page where people can then, where their affiliates can then get all of the various things they're going to need to promote your product. And um, Tony says, how do you generate the affiliate links? What we're going to be using is using the service uh, at clickbank.com. Now Clickbank will actually handle all of the technology behind running your affiliate links. So you don't need to know about that just yet because we're going to talk about that in two weeks time. Uh, when you actually get this integrated with Clickbank um, but basically what happens is 
Um, when you create a ClickBank account, you will be able to create a unique um, a unique affiliate link for anyone who wants to promote your product. All they need is a free account with ClickBank themselves. So what happens is right now ClickBank is the probably the largest and most trusted uh, retailer uh, or vendor for information downloadable digital products anywhere on the internet. They've generated billions of dollars in sales and the majority of that has come from affiliate promotions. So right now ClickBank already has probably tens of thousands of affiliates who are out there actively promoting products every single day and anybody can sign up to be a ClickBank affiliate for free. You just go to clickbank.com and you register an account. So what would happen is anyone who has a ClickBank account will then be able to uh, sign up to get an affiliate link for your product and promote it and make a commission. And what happens is ClickBank will process the payment when the payment has been successfully made, they will send the customer to your registration page and they can continue their journey through your sales funnel. But what happens is ClickBank take that money and every two weeks, every second Wednesday, they will send a check to you and they will send a check to the affiliates. And literally, that's all that happens. So all you need to do once this is up and running is make sure that you constantly get affiliates promoting your products. And then that's it. ClickBank will send the affiliates everything they are owed. They will send you everything you are owed. And it's all completely trackable in ClickBank. So when you log into ClickBank, you can see all of the sales you've made. You can see all of the sales that affiliates have made. You can see which, aff which affiliates have generated those sales. And it will handle everything for them. It's so easy to do. It's unreal. ClickBank itself, if you try and go it alone, looks confusing and scary as hell. But I have got the process after probably about a year of trying to make it work. I've got the process down to a fine art. So um, in two weeks time, when we get to that step, um, I'll actually be showing you how to uh, how to get your product integrated with ClickBank.com, how to get it working. So I want to point out there, your product will be selling using ClickBank.com to process the sale. But it will actually... Um, the whole thing, well, most of it happens on your website. So at no point is your product selling on clickbank.com. So it's not like people can go to ClickBank and buy your product. What's actually happening is people will land on your website. You will send them to an order form, which is hosted on clickbank.com, but it's an order form just for your product. And then as soon as they've bought it, they'll be redirected straight back to your website again. It's almost seamless. And most people who are not in the know wouldn't even notice that they'd left your website particularly. Um, so you, you'll see that when we get there. Does, does that kind of answer your question, Tony? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, the other question I wanted to answer is Jared's. Um, Jared says, how do you set up the download link so that only those who have paid can download the product? There's kind of two answers to this. Uh, the answer to your question is you would create a secure members area uh, like the one we've set up for Passive Hypnosis Profits, where people can only access the content if they have an account, but they can only get an account if they've made, if they've made a purchase. Um, the problem with that is that's where you're getting into technical, very, very technically very, very difficult stuff. We, the only reason we have done that with Passive Hypnosis Profits is because it's going to be a what we call a high-ticket product. It's going to be selling for a large sum of money, uh, at least $1,000 and probably several thousand dollars. So we didn't want to have it just on a random page. We wanted to make, and there's also a lot of content. You know, we're talking hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of video training, uh, which would be very cumbersome to have on a single page. For our products, though, the products we're creating, the products we recommend you create, uh, we would do it differently. Instead of building a members area, which is quite difficult, which you'll probably want to outsource, which will then cost you uh, several hundred dollars to have done, we're recommending that you just make a static download page, just a genuine HTML page that people land on, click on a button, it downloads it. Now, the problem with that, if you see it as a problem, and I personally don't, is that theoretically anyone who, ha who has the URL for that product can download it. In other words, if someone found that page, they can download your product regardless of whether they've bought it or not. But here's the thing, what you would do is you would name your download page something obscure. So you might call it uh, www.simplequittingsystem.com forward slash um, A2R5TYHV34920 secure download dot, dot HTML. 
So it's basically, what you want to do is when you make the page and you click File Save, you want to just put, put your cat on the keyboard, let it walk on the keys for a bit and see what random letters it types. And then there you go, that's your obscure thing. Or alternatively, what I do, shut my eyes and just let my, key, my fingers ripple on the keyboard. <laughs> and basically what you end up with is a long random string of letters and numbers. Uh, letters and numbers. You can also put hyphens in and uh, hyphens or underscores in as well. But you end up with a long string of letters and numbers that nobody in their right mind is ever going to guess. So basically what that means is when you upload it to your website, it would be at simplequittingsystem.com or whatever your .com domain is, .com forward slash and then a long string of random characters and letters. Uh, basically that means that when someone lands on your website and sees the simplequittingsystem.com in our case or your product name.com, they will then have no, you, you can't guess what that extension is going to be. Now, on the off chance someone did find it, and um, it probably does happen, A, you will never know that. You will never know that someone's been on that page without paying. Uh, and two, they, yes, they will be able to download your product without paying for it. But the chance of that is so slim. I don't imagine anyone has ever accidentally found my page. Now, the only alternative to that would be that somebody, admittedly, might buy your product, but then give the download URL to all of their friends. That's the only real way that people can easily find uh, the download page. Now, if that's going to happen, you might say, but I don't want that to happen. The issue there is, uh, it's the same with DVD piracy, it will happen, but even if they had a secure members area, Unless you have the technology that we have, which is to um, block multiple IP addresses. So if somebody logs in from multiple IP addresses, you can actually block their access. Without that technology, which again adds several hundred dollars to the setup cost of this, um, you actually still have no control over it. Because if somebody's bought your product and now has a, a login access to a members area, if they really want to, they can still share that with their friends. They just tell their friends, go here, log in, here's my email address, here's my password. So I think we have to face the fact that nowadays piracy, a piracy of products is, does happen, it will happen. Um, there's, there's a very slim chance that anyone will accidentally find your download page, particularly people who aren't very computer savvy. Your average customer won't know what an HTML page is or how it works or how websites work. So they won't know that they have to guess what the extension is going to be, etc. The other thing is that um, if people are going to share their product, they will find a way to do it regardless. Um, if you have it in a secure members area, they can still buy it, log in, download it, and then email it all to their friends. They'll, they'll always find a way to do it. The other thing is that typically, if people are bothering to look for something for free, they were probably never going to buy it in the first place. Now, I know that's a complacent attitude to take, uh, to say, well, that, that doesn't mean we should give people stuff for free just because they were never going to buy it in the first place. But the truth is, typically, people, people if, if they're that desperate to try and find stuff for free, they probably weren't going to buy it in the first place. So my answer to that really is, don't be too concerned about people finding it. If they find it, they'll find it, you'll never know. Um, for, for your average product, for anything less than $497, I personally wouldn't bother putting it in a secure members area. It adds a lot of expense, a lot of time, a lot of technicalities to doing it. We've had a technical person set up our entire members area for this product because it's just complicated and technical. So my personal thing there is, I know I banged on with that answer a bit, but if they're going to find it, they'll find it. The way to make it unlikely they'll find it is to give it a really obscure um, URL. And if uh, they do find it, they find it, just let them get on with it. The truth is you'll never know about it. So with that said, uh, we uh, have now talked about the basic pages that will make up your, your kind of sales funnel. We've got your uh, sales page, we've got your registration page, we've got your download page, we've got your affiliate sign up page and your affiliate tools page. Now you're probably wondering, how the heck do you make these pages? What's the technical side of making the pages? Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can either, so here's, here's the two ways. Number one is you can employ what we call a mini site designer to build a graphically appealing branded page specifically for your product. So this will be, um, it'll have a header image that'll have the name of your product on it. It will have a footer image that will have the name of your product on it. It may even have a background image that will have the name of your product on it. And it will be specifically for your product, for this, for a particular product. 
So they will then go away, create the graphic design and, and code that into a really cool HTML page that you can then just add your content to. So they will give you a page template that, that has your, your company, your product logo on the top, your product logo on the bottom. They'll make all of that. And literally, they will give you an HTML page. You would just copy it five times on your computer, have one as your sales page, one as your download page, one as your registration page, one as your affiliate registration page, and one as your affiliate tools page. And then basically, what you would do is to, um, uh, you would then basically go through and just add your content to each of those pages. Now, if you wanted to do that, the two mini site designers I recommend um, is a British guy called Rich who runs a company called quicksitestudio.com, okay, quicksitestudio.com, or um, a guy in Australia who's a bit more expensive but also very good. His website is made to convert.com. His name is Brent. Um, so that's quicksitestudio.com and made to convert.com. Those are the two I use all of the time. If you go to Google though and search the term mini site, mini site is all one word, mini site designer, you will find a stack of other people who can do this for you at different prices. And you can expect to pay between $37 and $197 for this mini site template to be made. Uh, typically I would look to pay $67 to $97 for it. Um, so yeah, and what you'll get is a really cool, stunning looking mini site. And This is what we call a mini site. It's this five page little website with the download page, the sales page, the registration page, the affiliate pages. That's what we call a mini site. So we're looking for a mini site designer. And literally they will give you the HTML template. You just take it and you edit it, which we'll talk about in a moment. You insert all of your information and everything you need uh, and they will just give you the template. The alternative is, if you don't want to go down that route, you can use a generic mini site template, which will basically work for any niche, any product, uh, because the pages are plain, they're not branded towards any specific product. It's typically just a white background with a central column in the middle uh, that looks like a piece of paper sort of standing up off the page. And literally, you just put all of your information in there. It will work for any product from smoking to weight loss to anything. Uh, now, what we've actually done, we're actually giving you uh, one of these templates, if you like. So what will happen is tomorrow, when you get this module in the members area, you can log in, you will find this module, which is module three, and there will be a link that says, click here to download our, mini site, our generic mini site template. And when you click the button, you'll download it, you'll get a zip file, and when you unzip it, there'll be five pages in there. One will be called sales page, one will be called registration page, one will be called download page, one will be called affiliate sign up page, and one will be called affiliate tools page. And literally, you can open these uh, in an HTML ed editor, which we'll talk about in a second, and then you can go through and edit these however you please. You can go through and just add in all of your content. Um, there's no real preference as to which one you're going to choose, neither of them still make the mistakes that a typical web designer does of having it really flowery and, and over the top. Um, sometimes I found that gra there's no general rule. I found that sometimes a, a, a graphical mini site will convert better. Sometimes a plain generic one will, will convert better and we test them everything we do with both. Um, because typically what really makes the sale is the content of your sales letter, which is what we're going to be talking about next week. Um, but it's really up to you. If you want one that looks really nice and graphical and has the logo of your product on it and you'll have to have one made for each product that you release, that's fine. Um, you know, $97 in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot of money because you only have to sell a couple of copies of your product and you've made that money back. But if you're on a budget or you want to start off simple, you might prefer to use our generic mini site template instead. And finally is how do you edit these pages once you've got them? Well, whichever option you choose to take, and by that I mean whether you have a designer design a nice graphical looking mini site for you, or whether you just use a blank generic page that we give you, you will basically end up with a blank canvas. So you'll have five pages, the five pages we've talked about. Your sales page, your registration page, your download page, your affiliate registration page, and your affiliate tools page. And what that means is you'll then have to go through and add in your sales letter you'll need to go through and add in your download information. You'll have to go through and add in your affiliate tools, your affiliate sign-up information, etc. You'll have to integrate that with your list building thing uh, in order to get people to sign up to your list. 
Now, that sounds really scary and complicated, but that is the easy bit, because the truth is, that person has given you the difficult bit. Your designer, or if you use our generic uh, templates instead, then they will be, uh, they will be that that's the difficult bit done. You literally will just be able to insert your content into that. So fortunately, it doesn't matter if you're not a web design wizard. It doesn't matter if you don't know everything about this, the programming behind a website because you can use very simple and also free software to edit your pages. Now, briefly, just to mention on this, uh, basically websites are built in HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's the basic programming language of the internet. Now, if you don't know HTML, and I only know the basics, I know enough to kind of get by, uh, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a whiz, I couldn't program a whole website in HTML from scratch. But fortunately, uh, you can use something called a WYSIWYG program, which you may or may not know, stands for what you see is what you get. Now, basically, what happens is it allows you to edit those web pages just as easily as you would edit a Microsoft Word document because it's all point and click. So if you can click where you want the text, type a sentence, and then block it, make it bold, color it red, color it yellow, whatever you want to do, if you can do that in Microsoft Word, you can use one of these WYSIWYG uh, HTML editors. Now, the one that I recommend, um, well, there's two. If you've got a bit of budget or if you've already got it, I recommend using Dreamweaver. That's the one I use. It's the industry standard. Uh, it's the one that most web designers use. If you don't have a budget or you want to do things cheap, there's a free piece of software that I really recommend uh, called Composer, but it's spelt K O M. P-O-Z-E-R. K-O-M-P-O-Z-E-R. Uh, and it's available from composer.net. K-O-M-P-O-Z-E-R.net. Uh, and when you download it, as I said, it's completely free. It's available for both computer and for Mac. PC and Mac, rather. Uh, you can download it to your computer. And basically what happens is you would open your pages in the HTML editor. Uh, and as soon as they're open, you can then go through and insert all of your various content, your sales letter, your affiliate tools, your download content, everything you want, you simply insert just by using point and click technology of this software. This brings us to the kind of the final uh, conclusion section of this module today. Um, basically, Hopefully, by this point, you have now created your product. Hopefully, you have, uh, if you haven't created your product, hopefully, you've planned it out instead. Hopefully, you've got the basic outline of everything you're going to do. Um, oh, Keith says, can you spell WYSIWYG? Yeah, it's W-Y-S-I-Y-G. So, it's W-Y-S-I... Uh, what you see is what you get. W Y hang on. W I C uh, sorry W W Y S I W Y G. What you see is what you get. So as I mentioned, this brings us on to our final thoughts for today's webinar. So hopefully by now you've created your product and if you haven't created your product, hopefully you have mapped it out, hopefully you've planned it out, hopefully you know what the product is gonna be, what type of product it's gonna be, how it will all work um, and stuff like that. Hopefully that will then mean that you can then go ahead and promote that um, product and uh, so you can then go and create that product again if you haven't already but hopefully you have. Uh, so now your next step is to make a decision about whether you're going to use a mini site designer to create your website or whether you're going to use our generic template. It really doesn't matter. I can't swear you either way. The truth is some products I've done, the mini site has worked best. Some products I've done, the generic thing has worked best. It's not too important. Really what's important is the sales copy that's in the middle. So it really depends on your personal preference, your personal budget too. So you need to decide whether you want to use a mini site designer or use our generic template. That is entirely up to you. Um, so basically your assignment for this week is then to create the basic pages we've talked about this in, in this webinar and prepare them as a blank canvas. So in other words, you need to have five HTML pages on your web, on your computer, ready to go, just five pages, which your mini site designer will give you. If you decide to use our templates, then they will be in the members area tomorrow. You literally just download them, unzip them, and you're good to go. 
And basically you'll need the sales page, the registration page, the download page, an affiliate sign up page and an affiliate tools page. So you'll have those on your computer if you get a designer to do it. You'll have those on your computer if you use our template and download it. And then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. Once you've got all of those, and once you've got your product, then you'll be good to put everything together. So in next week's module, we're gonna be talking about how to write a sales letter to go on your sales page. We're gonna be talking about how to add the content to your download page. We're gonna talk about how to build your affiliate tools and how to put everything on the internet. So basically, to recap everything so far, by the next module, which we'll discuss in a second, by the next training module, you will need to have a chosen niche, a chosen name, a domain name, some web space for it. You'll need to have the product made and ready to go, so actually complete your product. And you'll need to have those five pages, although they will be blank right now, they will literally just be five blank pages that you're gonna add the content to. Whether they're nice graphical ones or whether they're just plain, they will literally just be frameworks of a page that you can then go ahead and insert your content into when we create it next week. So with all of that said, that's what you're going to need by the time we get together for the next webinar. So you've got quite a lot to do. You need to finish your product and you need to get those five pages ready to go so that on next week's call, we can together go through and fill out everything, or make your sales letter, make your download page content and everything else to go with it too. Hopefully all of that makes sense. So we're really, you know, we're really making some really cool progress on this now, guys. Uh, if you are following along so far, then you will have selected a niche, you will have a product, you will have um, the uh, everything set up and ready to go, and now you will be able to go in and create the basic framework, at least, for your website. So you won't have the full website, but you'll have the basic framework of it, and then next week we can go ahead and pop in all of the important stuff like your sales letter and your uh, download information and all the rest of it. So uh, that pretty much wraps up this call, assuming nobody else has any questions. Fortunately, we managed to keep this call a little bit shorter than the previous ones. And uh, with that said, we'll wrap up this call and we'll hopefully see you all at 10 p.m. or 5 p.m. EDT, 10 p.m. GM, uh, British time on the uh, Sunday, the 26th of August, 2012, when we will be talking about how to insert your actual web content into your sales page, your download page, your affiliate page, and all the rest of it. Uh, so with that said, this is Robert Temple signing out for now. And I look forward to speaking to you all uh, on Sunday. So I'll talk to you very soon, everyone. Bye for now.